So, today's session uh, will be on brand strategies. Brand strategies in a way encompass many of the strategic ideas we have discussed in this course. from a marketing perspective, segmentation, targeting, positioning, customer relationship, customer loyalty, competitive advantage, different types of competitive actions. All of these that we have discussed before can be sort of summarized, structured and actualized in the marketplace under the banner of brand strategy. So, as you see therefore, on top we have put two interactive issues brand and offering. We have discussed this concept of offering before and now we would like to emphasize that marketing success, strategic success in the marketplace is very, very closely related with the strength of brand and offering. As we have discussed before, offering is actually a kind of a broad umbrella concept, which encompasses tangible elements of the product and services as well as intangible elements. So, when it talks about tangible elements, it is the things that we normally associate with product in the four P's or marketing mix. That means, the shape, color, size, weight, features, benefits, all of those very tangibly defined, uh, definable uh, aspects of the product or the service is tan. On the other hand, there are intangible elements of the offering, which are things like uh, the emotional uh, evocation uh, from the product. The, 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 the presence, the sense of presence of the product or the service um, and all of those, we will discuss it in a little bit more detail. And intangible also includes a kind of a new concept, which uh, we have not discussed before, but which we call agility. Uh, basically, it signifies that how resilient is the product with respect to new additions to it, as well as how the product uh, is resilient to withstand uh, negative developments uh, or market downturns and so on and so forth. We will discuss it in a little bit more detail. So, we offer of course, therefore, offering will include packaging issues, uh, different uh, uh, store keeping units uh, that SKUs as we call them. That means, in how many different sizes. Um, or different shapes, colors, etcetera, the product. So, uh, is available in the marketplace. Uh, related services, the name that is associated or the logo or the symbol, which are associated with the brand and the warranties, guarantees, etcetera, that are represented by that brand offering um, or product offering. These are all part of uh, uh, the concept of uh, the broad concept of uh, offering. And so, there as you can see therefore, uh, uh, some authors feel that brand therefore, is a major constituent of the broader concept of offering. Of course, some people uh, would like to deal uh, these two concepts separately. Uh, it uh, really does not matter as far as our today's discussion is concerned, the fundamental point is that the strength of your offering and uh, uh, the evolving strength of the offering 
or the evolving strength of the brand are strong indicators of the success of your marketing strategy. Brands actually help uh, both buyers. So, therefore, uh, brand has is a has a positive correlation with uh, buyers benefits and it also has positive correlation with marketers. So, marketers advantages. So, buyers benefits and marketers advantages. Buyers benefits because uh, if we remember uh, the earlier model that we have discussed and of the buying process that is uh, attention, interest, desire and finally, the purchase action. Attention, interest, Th these are the uh, uh, tasks that we want to uh, the, the major tasks of the marketing uh, activity to create uh, awareness, uh, attract attention of the intent of the targeted buyers, uh, create interest in their mind um, and create desire and finally, cause purchase action. Now, a brand helps in enforcing or rather shortening the time uh, in attracting attention, creating awareness and creating interest. So, it reduces for the buyer search time or information gathering time, time as well as in some way cost. So, if you if there is a strong brand preference for Nokia and if you are the buyer is looking for a new phone, then his uh, today there are so many different varieties of mobile phones that are available in the marketplace. If the buyer has a strong affinity towards the brand of Nokia or Samsung or the Apple, then in a way uh, his or her search time search costs get uh, uh, reduced. It also uh, for the buyer uh, signifies uh, a reduced risk perception, which comes from his or her previous experience or um, uh, experience of his friends, relatives. That means, the uh, referral inputs, which actually reduces the risk perception. And it also um, uh, has this effect of cumulatively building uh, emotional um, um, comfort. Uh, so, so a brand also therefore gives some kind of emotional comfort to the to the buyer that uh, his or her decision uh, is on the right track, is in the right direction. Obviously, therefore, um, these are building blocks of long-term relationship uh, with the customer, as we will see. Therefore, the brand uh, salience or the brand dynamics has extremely significant contribution towards building long-term relationship. Uh, with the customer consumer that we have discussed before, uh, the, the importance of that in the strategic sense. Uh, the brand also represents uh, some advantages for the marketer in terms of better conversion rate from this AI stage that is uh, attention, awareness and interest stage to desire and action stage, because ultimately this is what uh, uh, contributes to our top line growth. This is what the purchase action, this is what uh, brings revenue growth, uh, uh, brings profit growth. So, ultimately we are in interested in this conversion from awareness and interest to desire and finally, purchase action. And this is facilitated, accelerated, uh, strengthened this, this transition from awareness and interest to desire and action is uh, strengthened and accelerated by uh, the brand strength or branding strategy. So, there is a better conversion rate uh, that is an advantage from a marketer's point of view. And it also um, uh, helps to reduce the risk in launching 
uh, new products or line extensions, which we will see. So, if Dove has a very strong brand connotation in the uh, consumer's mind that it is uh, moisturizing, it um, is uh, helps uh, during winter um, uh, for the the, the uh, demoisturization that is caused by the weather. And so, if Dove has that connotation that it is soft, it is moisturizing, etcetera, etcetera, then from soap, which was the original offering from the Dove uh, brand uh, um, uh, stable, uh, they can uh, go into shampoos, conditioners. Uh, uh, so, therefore, uh, because that strong brand imagery, they have this advantage of reducing the risk in launching a new uh, sort of related product. So, that is an advantage which a strong brand brings uh, to the marketer. It also uh, helps in continuously uh, creating the distinctiveness that is so important today in the cluttered marketplace. So, a strong brand uh, uh, with a strong association projects immediately a distinct distinctive uh, image in the customer's mind, perception in the customer's mind. So, a brand, uh, what is a brand? There are many definitions, uh, but the American Marketing Association definition and few of its uh, uh, derivatives are uh, pretty good at this moment for us to start with that a brand is a name, it is a, a set of ter terms, uh, it is a, it's a sign, it is a symbol. Uh, it is a design, uh, all of that combination which kind of helps us to identify and differentiate an offering from the rest of those in the market. This, this thing about uh, distinctiveness in the cluttered market that we were talking about. The other term which is important for us to look at at this moment is brand equity. And brand equity is in a way it is a premium that an offering can command in the market. Uh, with respect to the other uh, products uh, in that category. And uh, in a way, the just as in, a, um, in the share market, um, an equity valuation um, signifies the difference between the market value of that uh, uh, stock uh, um, with respect to the book value. So, obviously, better stocks which have better equity uh, represents a higher differential between market value and the book value. We often call it also the market value add or MVA. In the same way, the, the brand equity signifies the perceived value, uh, uh, the, the, the difference between um, the intrinsic value of the brand and the value in the customer's mind. Uh, and, and, and what does that signify? How do we measure that? Uh, we will discuss today. So, when a band has higher equity, then the company can have more leverage with uh, channels, uh, market channels, distributors, um, suppliers and can obtain uh, uh, direct as well as indirect premium on their offering. So, it is a kind of a defense against price erosion. If there is a strong brand it is often not that affected by market downturn, because it has a loyal core. So, they will, there, are, there is a, um, a strong association between uh, a, a certain uh, glycerin soap brand. So, come winter customers will, uh, uh, will, will uh, uh, go and buy that product and therefore, their volume growth is uh, not that affected by um, if, if there is a market downturn. So, other uh, soaps or products in that category um, may get uh, you know have upswings and downswings depending on uh, the disposable income available, uh, but uh, one can see that some of these products uh, continue to do well in. Uh, so, they are they are relatively stable, their growth is more predictable and so on. So, and in the same way, because they have that predictability in terms of growth and strength, um, the distributors will be interested in that product. Um, and, and, the, and, and you can also, because of um, continuous, steady, stable uh, growth in the volume, 
you can be command uh, better terms from the suppliers. And of course, as we were discussing the case of Dove, that because it has this strong association brand position with respect to uh, created by its moisturizing soap, um, uh, which was kind of a, uh, a, a different connotation it created very successfully in the uh, customer's mind. So, they have been equally successful in uh, distinctively positioning their shampoo or their conditioner or their skin lotion and so on and so forth. So, so therefore, a uh, higher brand equity helps us in uh, creating new products in that same category what we call brand extension. It gives us more leverage with channels uh, both in terms of suppliers and distributors and it obviously uh, creates a different defense against uh, price erosion. So, this is a very important model. We are presenting this right in the beginning and we will uh, present a more enhanced version of this uh, pyramid uh, towards the end of the session. So, it is very easy to understand that uh, at the uh, right at the bottom and this is actually uh, the higher number this is uh, whatever we have created uh, through our promotion and other marketing mix activities. Uh, we do get at least some buyers to start with, but these buyers are usually to in the beginning they are transient buyers and obviously they are very price sensitive because some of these buyers might be a, a, a person who is uh, looking at uh, your new offering or your product um, uh, as uh, possibly just to experiment uh, one time buy uh, in preference to some other uh, brand. So, uh, you can uh, through the traditional marketing activities uh, like promotional activities over different media, uh, if you go in a kind of an advertising blitzkrieg, you can get some buyers um, uh, in the store looking for your product. But then only if we are able to deliver to the promise that has been encapsulated in the promotion, uh, we can turn the transient buyer into a satisfied buyer. So, we often call this as the level of brand performance. So, a certain percentage of the transient buyers, if your brand does deliver to the promise, can be converted to satisfied buyer. But today we understand there was earlier literature we really focused on how to convert the transient buyer to the satisfied buyer. But today we understand that with the increasing level of competition in every kind of market, just satisfying the customer is, uh, is, is not enough. We need to go beyond that. So, first thing that is important is to create a barrier against switching or we often call it inconvenience of switching. The inconvenience of switching obviously is created by the convenience that you offer to the customer beyond what is the uh, cost benefit um, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the offering. So, you may be offering more value compared to the price that has been paid by the customer. So, your, your product therefore, causes a satisfaction at different level, but in addition to that you have to focus on various kinds of transaction costs which are part of your uh, uh, which is part of the acquisition uh, cost of the customer. So, so many of those are invisible, uh, uh, they are not directly reflected on the price that is printed um, on, the, on, on the product. Uh, they are like uh, the time it uh, takes to access your product, the, the, the travel uh, expenses to access your product, the, uh, the um, ease of parking at in front of your uh, retail outlet and so on and so forth. So, there are many invisible 
uh, elements in the so called transaction cost. So, reducing the transaction cost, reducing the transaction hassle in a way builds uh, barriers against uh, um, uh, against switching. So, so, you have to create satisfaction and to uh, retain that satisfaction, you have to continuously focus on this uh, ease of um, uh, access, uh, basically uh, continuously reducing all cost and hassle of the transaction of the, of, of the purchase process. But if this is where actually very few, I mean as you can see as the pyramid becomes narrower, after satisfaction and the, the, the barrier against switching or rather ease of transaction, uh, if we do many other activities, if we focus in terms of marketing all these brand building activities, then only we create emotional bonding. So, which here we are talking about uh, moving from the cognitive factors uh, in consumer behavior to the affective factors from the rational uh, reasons uh, for buying your uh, product or service to the emotional reasons uh, arising out of the bond with the customer, uh, uh, which uh, uh, causes the, 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 the buying, uh, uh, repeat buying and referral uh, uh, buying and so on. And lastly, this is uh, you know the, the prime target of today's marketers is to co-opt the customer uh, in the uh, marketing process, is to uh, have the customer as your partner. Um, in a way, therefore, it, uh, the strongest uh, promotion today is the word of mouth and reference uh, from the customer uh, through the customer advocacy. That means, the customer becomes part of your marketing team. Uh, if, you have, if you have been able to achieve this level, then your brand really becomes salient, your brand becomes then a power brand. Uh, so, so, whether your brand is a power brand or not uh, depends on how many of your customers voluntarily endorse, promote, talk about your product. So, uh, many times therefore, uh, to understand this customer advocacy today, because so, social media is so uh, active, uh, the brands that are um, strongly endorsed um, on the social media platforms, um, where one customer talks freely to another customer and sort of gives the positive points. Um, and, and maybe sometimes constructive criticism um, create a buzz, which is uh, infinitely valuable for the uh, marketers to create the strategic competitive advantage. So, therefore, this brand building pyramid today guides uh, the marketing strategy um, in, in many different ways, uh, as we will see just now. So, the communication strategy uh, to build the brand to progress along that uh, pyramid that we just saw, uh, obviously we will have to start with increasing benefits. These benefits will in also include reducing hassles and indirect uh, costs, transaction costs etcetera. The product service system quality, which means that you not only should think in terms of continuously enhancing the product quality, but you should also look at all the services that are, as, that are associated. So, you might be able to bring out a fantastic refrigerator, uh, which actually uh, scores highly in terms of performance and in terms of other aesthetics etcetera, compared to the other offerings in the marketplace. But if you have not associated with it the installation service, the customer problem solving service, the uh, continuous uh, monitoring, uh, so that the customer gets optimum value from your uh, product. Uh, if those have not been also uh, made equally effective, then this, uh, then this, this quality 
uh, pyramid is not complete. So, so the sense of uh, a, a total quality approach in the marketing sense today must include the, the pre sales services where you help customer by providing information to make choices, then the uh, quality of the product itself or the service itself um, and then also the post consumption support uh, and uh, problem solving uh, support, uh, the so called warranty service, uh, the, the guarantee issues all of those must be included to create a complete uh, quality initiative that should be part of your brand communication and that is something that you must deliver. What you promise you must deliver and, uh, and, and that therefore becomes an important part of uh, rising through this pyramid. Um, and then of course, it, uh, very, very uh, common sense elements that a, a good brand has an easy to remember, easy to pronounce, uh, easy to recognize name and, uh, and, and then of course, in the category of that product and service combination, the uniqueness is also should be part of the strong communication uh, that is uh, important for the first step to go from the transient buyer to the satisfied buyer and in a way it also helps a strong communication strategy that is based on reality is, uh, is a way to uh, climb through that pyramid. The other building blocks of that uh, gradual strategy in enhancing the brand equity are based on uh, you know the taglines um, uh, and some of those taglines have remained uh, famous and have continued to strengthen. So, when uh, Nirma talked about washing powder Nirma with a particular jingle and which was widely uh, promoted through the, uh, the radio and television and so on. So, it, it kind of uh, created a, a very strong position that uh, what is Nirma and uh, uh, it is of course, a debatable question uh, that whether uh, when Nirma came up with uh, salt, uh, uh, table salt whether that strong brand position washing powder Nirma uh, helped or actually uh, in a way did not help uh, the promotion uh, strategy of the uh, uh, salt. So, that is something that you can think about and discuss. So, tagline slogan uh, the, the distinctive color scheme symbols and logos these are all part of the brand association which again are important for um, the the brand communication strategy and important for uh, these first three steps in the brand building pyramid. The other uh, very uh, common and well known brand building strategy is to use brand ambassadors. Uh, you see um, the celebrity endorsements or involving um, uh, top stars, uh, top players um, in, in either creating a new brand or creating a distinctive position. So, um, therefore, uh, of course, sometimes the celebrities are overused and uh, one can question the effectiveness that whether the same person can uh, endorse and create the same kind of brand imagery in the consumer's mind from cement to fountain pen to uh, um, you know some perfume and uh, all kinds of uh, diverse portfolio can a particular celebrity's imagery uh, sustain all of that uh, from a pain reliever uh, to a fountain pen to a cement uh, brand and all of that can be whether. Uh, but uh, one can see sometimes uh, like for example, recently we have seen Sahara group they have launched a chain of uh, retail uh, uh, format uh, the Q store and the uh, entire uh, uh, Indian cricket team uh, is endorsing uh, this brand and, and uh, they are already brand ambassadors uh, because of the contract they have with the Sahara group. Uh, so, we see in all cricket matches uh, they were uh, very prominently the name Sahara 
and now Sahara is uh, leveraging on that, uh, that ambassador strength to launch this brand new activity, which is quite distinct from whatever they have done before in launching this retail store. Um, so, so, this is, uh, so now we can see how exactly uh, this thing happens in the marketplace. Uh, this is as you can see, uh, we are looking at toothpaste and we are looking at these different market segments, children, uh, young adults or teens, family, um, adults and we are looking at these various uh, attributes. So, uh, so, some people will be interested in the flavor and color and some people will be, some customers will be interested um, in the uh, plaque prevention or stain prevention, smokers and so on. So, uh, uh, with that you can create, these are imaginary brands like uh, stain gone or ultra white or fresh clean or green stripe and so on. And therefore, as you can see in the, in this name you uh, create an imagery which is closely associated with this uh, stain prevention and plaque uh, prevention and it is uh, by the name itself it is uh, sort of related to the target segment and, uh, and in its uh, packaging of values offered and in the communication strategy uh, this will be highlighted as opposed to say um, uh, flavor and color. And therefore, uh, as you can see all these become building blocks of the brand projection. So, uh, to summarize therefore, uh, uh, the brand is therefore, some kind of a direction, how the marketing uh, strategy will unfold. It encompasses purpose and it is based on uh, identity schema and meaning creation in customers mind. On the other hand, the brand equity is in a way the way to measure brand value and uh, it will be measured in terms of by measuring loyalty, familiarity, they, I am not putting them in uh, exact order. Obviously, familiarity will precede loyalty uh, and cognitive affective and cognitive behavioral aspects uh, or, or, or association. So, all these go into creating the so called. So, as you can see both brand as well as brand equity are multi level concepts. So, they have uh, a sort of uh, a tangible aspect and below the line sort of invisible many intangible aspects. So, it represents a kind of a pyramid or a multi level structure, uh, which we often call the the, the brand uh, architecture. So, the brand equity management uh, as a part of your marketing strategy uh, obviously will be to develop the positive brand awareness and link it with a uh, product class to create a distinctive identity. So, when you say uh, makemytrip.com it is a very clear positioning um, uh, or yatra.com. As you can see in all those names, they try to create an awareness and a category positioning uh, relation in the customer's mind quite distinctly that what they are for, 
what is their purpose. So, as we discussed a, uh, in the previous one, therefore, the identity and purpose uh, are must be closely related in the brand equity management first step. And of course, the uh, creating the strong relationship, because it is a multi level concept. So, the tangible part and the intangible part, that means, the uh, relating the cognitive as well as affective parts, the rational and the emotional uh, imageries in the customer's mind must be closely uh, related and evoked uh, through your brand building strategy. And that can be done um, through your promotional, through the drama that is brought into um, the, the those uh, 30 seconds uh, TV spots. Therefore, tell a story, um, create uh, a situation that actually brings together this. Uh, so, if you watch any one of those, when you look at these various shampoo ads, whether you when you look at the various kinds of skin um, uh, treatment uh, products that are now flooding the market. And you can see therefore, um, in how they are uh, evoking uh, a uh, imagery that strongly links uh, the subliminal messages as well as the, um, the what the so called um, uh, overt and covert um, messages that are being uh, displayed. And in the brand equity management, when we give this promotions, the in that 30 second when we are trying to uh, relate in the customer's mind, the cognitive and rational as well as the affective and emotional issues and trying to relate it uh, uh, very strongly with a uh, possible need uh, in the uh, uh, that the customer may have or you may try to create. Uh, you must simultaneously uh, continue to monitor that whether this identity and meaning uh, are getting really reflected in the thinking and feeling uh, of in the customer's mind. And, and you have to also continuously measure as a part of your brand equity that whether you are moving from the loyalty to the advocacy level. Uh, that means, this the, the uh, pyramid that we had seen that this progress must measuring that whether you are progressing from satisfied buyer to an a customer who is your advocate partner in your marketing process. This needs to be uh, continuously monitored, measured uh, through various uh, kinds of surveys and so on. So, therefore, at this stage we would like to say that successful brands uh, provide organizations with uh, financial benefits, because they have uh, an economic value as an intangible asset, which is created through a combination of tangible and intangible values, um, cognitive and affective reasons that we offer persuading the customer to buy the product or the service. That creates a competitive advantage and obviously, therefore, it creates earnings and cash flow in excess of the return on the tangible assets. So, so the, the all the expenses that you incur in enhancing brand equity, in getting a celebrity to talk about your product on TV. You spend crores of rupees in doing that, but that investment in building that brand equity is only valid, is only um, part of a good marketing strategy, when it brings you that superlative earning and cash flow in excess of the return that would have happened otherwise. So, in branding strategy, we aim to derive different benefits in terms of 
product clustering, product service integration as well as in uh, launching new products or expanding a relationship. So, there are different benefits that we can derive from a good branding strategy. Some of them are namely say multi product branding. In this approach, we use the same name for all the products in a class or related category set of categories. So, like I was using the example of Dove. So, that is used for soap, that is used for shampoo, that is used for conditioner, that is used for skin lotion and so on and so forth. So, you uh, therefore, continue to focus on building the association between Dove and softness, moisturizing, winter uh, care and so on and so forth. So, for example, we have very strong association uh, between Nivea and winter and winter care, skin care. So, if Nivea therefore, wants to come up with uh, a deodorant, then one can argue that that strong association with uh, skin care and winter and so on uh, may be uh, in, uh, a, a, a in a way a, a liability or, or a, a hindrance until and unless uh, they are able to create distinct um, li, uh, different evocation for the same name, which is difficult. So, that is why sometimes when a uh, company uh, like say Unilever or Procter and Gamble, when they have number of uh, different uh, fast moving consumer goods in their offering uh, basket, uh, they equally strengthen or maybe perhaps spend more in uh, developing this multi branding strategy. That means, each product or product line is given a distinct name and, and, and reinforced. So, whether it is uh, Pepsodent, uh, whether it is Ariel, uh, whether it is uh, Surf, uh, whether it is. Uh, so, all of these are different categories that are created, they may all come from the same company or uh, companies competing in the same uh, marketplace and you create therefore, the. So, sometimes you may not know that uh, who is the manufacturer of uh, Ariel or who is the manufacturer of uh, Colgate uh, uh, toothpaste and so on and so forth. So, because uh, the, the marketer is focused more on building the product brand or the service brand rather than the corporate brand. Uh, private brands are uh, often um, way of enhancing your revenue, uh, because you use the same facility uh, to create products, which may not be sold uh, under your brand, but will be sold by uh, different uh, manu uh, different marketers. So, there are uh, uh, in the field of uh, consumer electronics or even professional electronics uh, like uh, uh, computers, tablets, mobile phones. There are a number of manufacturers who manufacture for several marketers and uh, the when you get the product, you associate through the brand name from where it has come. So, you may not have any idea who is the original manufacturer of uh, lava or uh, Micromax and so on, um, because they are more known by the brand. And of course, also in the consumer uh, fast moving consumer goods, uh, many of the top retailers uh, like uh, Big Bazaar or Pantaloon or uh, More or uh, Reliance Fresh, they will have uh, their own brands, uh, where they have their suppliers and who uh, agree to uh, supply with the store brand. So, uh, multi product branding is also called sometimes family branding or uh, corporate branding and uh, it is aimed at 
creating the dominance in that offering class. Um, and uh, it, it, it is uh, one thing that is helpful is that as we were discussing the case of uh, Nivea or uh, Dove or so they have this strong brand equity which is related to winter which is related to skin care and and therefore uh, it if they come up with a new variant uh, then it, it it helps so as you can see for example uh, ponds or Nivea they have different types of uh, similar products so something may be uh, for very harsh uh, or, um, or or the shampoos often use it uh, also that you have some the same shampoo and you say create four variants leveraging the same brand awareness that something which is for oily hair something which is for uh, dry hair something which is for um, uh, hair fall something which is for dry scalp and so on and so forth. So, uh, you use uh, your, your promotion cost comes down because the customer uh, is uh, attracted to uh, that particular brand of shampoo and then may be uh, more pleased when he or she finds these other variants which um, kind of aims at customization. Uh, Multi product branding on the other hand, it because it is uh, uh, it, it is a brand marketed under the same name in many countries, uh, it therefore kind of creates a global strength and of course, uh, it um, obviously needs a lot of investment to create that global borderless image uh, as enjoyed by Colgate or Coke or Pepsi or McDonald's and so on. So, it uh, does uh, need uh, huge investment, but sometimes this multi product branding can dilute the meaning of the brand in the mind of the customer. Uh, so, uh, some people are now arguing that whether uh, Pizza Hut now trying to get into pasta in trying to get into various other kinds of um, Indian variant or Asian variant uh, is uh, whether that is strengthening uh, the market position of uh, Pizza Hut or it is uh, diluting uh, the original proposition of Pizza Hut which is actually uh, to, to be a leader in the pizza market. So, in a way uh, the current uh, marketing strategy of uh, Pizza Hut appears to be that they are trying to cover a wider range of uh, fast uh, food um, and, and, and uh, their promotion strategy uh, in India which has been in a way successful in promoting uh, Pizza Hut as a family uh, dining out place um, almost close to fine dining as it is called in that category of uh, restaurant service um, compared to the uh, you know drive in and drive out type of fast food uh, image that Pizza Hut has in uh, US or in some other countries uh, can be examined in terms of that whether a multi uh, product branding is helpful or uh, is a hindrance uh, in uh, terms of brand strength. Uh, there are possibilities of course, uh, to create sub brand uh, that uh, it combines a uh, family brand uh, with a with a with a. So, it, it can be uh, like say uh, KFC salsa or KFC uh, so some new promotion that is going on that it is a uh, multi flavored uh, dip associated with the original uh, KFC proposition of uh, fried chicken. And uh, so, you, you, you can see that uh, sometimes it may be very successful, um, sometimes on a price quality continuum. Uh, it allows the company to occupy different position, uh, 
but there is a limit to this uh, multi product branding and uh, one can see uh, how uh, the say coffee cafe day uh, who though associated strongly with coffee, um, but also um, try to create associated offerings which items snacks that go with coffee and, and whether they will be successful in creating that strong a image or, or success uh, in, in um, selling say coffee beans or coffee making machines or their cookies and their brownies and, uh, and all that. So, uh, uh, sometimes this can be very successful this multi product branding, but if it is carefully executed, continuously monitored, uh, continuously uh, evaluated in terms of customers uh, perception. The multi branding as we discussed is useful strategy. Uh, when each brand is meant for a different market segment um, and though may be associated like uh, Unilever or Procter and Gamble, they are able to manage multiple uh, brands, uh, something that is for detergent, something that is for toothpaste, something that is for soap, something that is for shampoo and, uh, and, and, and obviously, uh, this kind of company for their growth and for their uh, relationship building with the customers uh, entire lifestyle activity in that kind of that means washing cleaning. Uh, so, cleaning of teeth, cleaning of uh, 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 clothes are all these because they come from related technologies in their operations. So, they create this. Uh, different brands which can leverage their uh, technological and operational core competency and can create different value streams. So, it is a it is a good strategy from that perspective. Sometimes of course, it happens because companies acquire for their growth. Uh, some growth happens what we call organic growth that means, the natural way in the marketplace from their offering, but sometimes inorganic growth that means, a companies grow by through acquisitions and mergers and that sometimes create this uh, multi branding uh, opportunity as well as sometimes multi branding challenge. Because uh, earlier those two brands might have been competing in the marketplace and now if you put these two uh, brands and their customer base together, uh, one can whether you should kill one brand or you should retain both brands. Um, whether you can manage to retain both types of customers will be a very uh, uh, a very involved strategy that cannot be prescriptive, but has to be evaluated on a case by case basis. So, there are examples when post acquisition the uh, both brands have been kept alive, uh, because one brand might have had a very strong position in Europe and the other brand might have had a strong position in Japan and therefore, uh, you do not uh, you you retain both brands and uh, so, um, sometimes customers are not even aware that, that the back end they are owned by the same uh, corporate group. So, uh, brand growth strategy finally, is uh, we, we represent this uh, simple 2 by 2 matrix that you can have existing brands as we have discussed in ANSOF matrix. So, existing brands in the existing product class is you can actually do line extension. So, if you have uh, Lux soap, uh, then you can create some new variant within Lux soap. So, uh, this is what we call line extension, but you can also take existing brand and go to a new product class. So, you may like to create a Lux shampoo or like we discussed dove. So, dove can create different flavors in the dove soap category, but if they come to dove shampoo, then they are actually doing what we call brand extension, because they are coming into a new product class. So, it is the existing brand in the new product class, but it could be also a new brand in a new product class, which means that the same company 
uh, Procter and Gamble can perhaps now uh, get into uh, say deodorant. So, it has uh, really speaking no correlation we assume that that uh, therefore, it is a it is a completely new product class it is a completely new brand. So, at that stage say putting uh, the name of Colgate or Dove or um, uh, or Ariel uh, etcetera to a um, um, deodorant uh, will not be uh, obviously, it has to be a uh, new brand needs to be created, because the imagery the identity uh, the, the package of benefit promised uh, in, uh, in, in, in Dove or Nivea or uh, Colgate or Ariel is not same as what it needs to be created here for say deodorant. So, uh, sometimes of course, a new brand needs to be introduced in the existing product class, because you need to uh, create some kind of a fighter a response uh, to uh, your competitive offering. So, if Pepsodent is now coming up with a new type of innovative toothpaste, which combines the features of a uh, cleaning properties of a toothpaste, the mouth freshening properties of a um, uh, mouthwash and the dental floss activities of uh, which is needed for uh, um, older customers. If all that can be combined uh, in one product and, and they create a unique position and if that product becomes very successful, then uh, competing products uh, will have to uh, competing companies will have to come up with a response. So, therefore, they may have to then introduce uh, a, a new brand in that existing product class. In case of Pepsodent, they have actually used uh, in the existing brand, they are creating a new product class. So, this is their brand extension strategy, but the response from another manufacturer might come uh, here, because they may like to position it based on their current strength on mouthwash. Uh, as opposed to their current strength on. So, Listerine might now come up with a uh, new variant in the toothpaste category uh, and therefore, then that becomes uh, they may not like to use the name of Listerine, because it is so closely associated with uh, mouthwash. So, they may decide to uh, use another uh, name another uh, value proposition, even it can come in another format. Uh, so, uh, it, it may not come in a paste format, it may come in a, a gel format and it can therefore, try to combine uh, the both virtues of uh, a, a, the mouthwash category and the toothpaste category. So, the brand growth strategies therefore, can uh, be thought of a, a, in this in terms of this variant of the ANSOF metrics.